This message comes to you from King's Church Wirral, UK. We hope that as you listen, you will be encouraged, blessed and inspired. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And that is the parable today that I'm sharing about and what it means for us. So in Mark 4 verse 30, uh, Jesus is speaking and he's, he's speaking a series of parables. And so he gets to this one and he says, again he said, you can imagine Jesus doing this, again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Imagine, Jesus, this, these are the words from Scripture. What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth, and yet when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. End of parable. Must be funny to listen to Jesus saying these parables at the time, mustn't it? And thinking, is, is that it? A very short parable. So what does it mean? Well, there are three elements to the parable. There's the small seed, there's the large plant, and there's the birds. Now, when I'm preparing to uh, teach on something, what I do is I just ask a series of questions. And as I get the answers to that, that is what I uh, share with you. And so, uh, as, as I'm thinking about the small seed that grows into a large plant, which is so big that birds can perch in its shade. Well, if we start with the seed, what is that? You probably already know. Tell me. It's a, it's a mustard seed, but what does it represent? It represents the Word of God. That's right. And we get that. How, how do we get that? It's because, well, Jesus has already told a parable of the sower. And when he's explaining the sower seed, sower sowing seed to the disciples, he explains it and he said, um, the farmer sows the word. So nice and simple, the seed is the word. Now when Jesus explains the seed in the, of the same parable of the sower in the gospel of Matthew in 13, he says this, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. So the seed is the word, and the word is the message about the kingdom. So what's the message about the kingdom? Now, the message about the kingdom is what we re would refer to as the good news or the gospel. So the good news is this. Let me tell you what the good news is. In the beginning, mankind were created in the image and likeness of God. And they were called to rule the earth on God's behalf. We were to be a colony of of the kingdom of heaven on earth. And man was given this command in Genesis 1.28, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Now God has not changed those plans. Despite the failure of man to stay obedient, which resulted in the fall he loved the world too much to leave it corrupted and polluted. He still commands to this day 
that the earth will be filled with his glory. He's still commanding us to be fruitful and increase. So this God who loves us, this is the good news, through the visitation of Jesus to our planet, did what he did, Jesus did what he did to recover the authority that was lost by Adam. He made a way for us to be rescued from the dominion and control of darkness and become citizens of the kingdom of light. That's good news. He's made a way for those who are lost to find real life and relationship with him again. He has made a way for the oppressed, the oppressed to walk out of their prisons, whatever their experience of being bound and locked up is. This Jesus has made a way for prisons to be opened. He's made a way for the poor to be helped and have every need supplied. This is the good news. He is the God who brings justice and righteousness and the one who rescues us. This is the good news. He has brought about a deliverer who sets us free from our sin, guilt, and shame. Jesus is our Savior and the King of this wonderful kingdom. This is the good news of the kingdom. And this King, this King Jesus, has paid a price for all this with his own sacrifice of himself on the cross. His blood shed on the cross has obliterated and undone the work of the enemy and his destructive forces and has brought about our forgiveness and healing and right standing before God. Through his resurrection from the dead, he has made a way for us to leave behind our old identity as sinners and rise up in new power as new creations, as sons of God. This is the good news of the kingdom. And all this for a reason that as children of God and citizens of the kingdom, we grow in maturity to become ambassadors of the kingdom, being and telling the good news of the kingdom to the whole world. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we are agents of increase. Hear that? We are agents of increase until all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. His plan has never, ever changed. And we know this. God will fulfill the purpose that he said right at the beginning. There is no doubt about that. There is nothing that can stop him. He is God and he will fill the earth with his glory. But this is the great thing as well, the good news. We are to bring the kingdom into every sphere of our world, wherever we are and whatever, wherever we are sent. So, the kingdom coming could be through you in the world of the media or the world of education or health and healing or givers to the poor or being a voice to the downtrodden agents of transformation carriers of the message of hope wherever we find ourselves whether it's a driver on the buses to a filmmaker in Hollywood, whether it's a, a cleaner, to a prime minister, if you submit to serve the king, you will be part of the growth and influence of the kingdom of God in the world. In the, world. the potential for kingdom growth 
is the whole world being transformed and changed for the better. And it all began with a small seed. As small as a mustard seed. John 1, the Gospel of John says this, In the beginning was the Word, that's the seed, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Verse 14, the Word, the seed, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we know that the Word seed was planted in Mary, the mother of Jesus, and became the beginning of the plant or the tree that would become the kingdom of God. Jesus was born a baby. What small beginnings. And just like a, an acorn has, has, contains the potential of an oak tree, so this baby seed would become the beginnings of the phenomenal growth of the kingdom of God. Jesus himself is described in the prophecies of the Old Testament in Isaiah as a shoot of a plant. For example, Isaiah 11, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy with justice. He will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. That is the seed of the kingdom. And Jesus says the kingdom would grow from a small seed into a large plant. Now the seed he referred to in the parable was a mustard seed. So another thing I asked myself, I said, well, I wonder what that means in the Greek. <laughs> so, so I looked at, at, at mustard, and uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a Greek word, word, sinapi. Now, that's usually what we say when one of the kids have done something, and we say, sinapi. <laughs> but actually, that's how you say this word, sinapi. And what it means is to hurt or sting. And it's true to say this, that the phenomenal growth of the kingdom of God would come out of hurt or a sting. Jesus, through his own painful death and burial, became the seed that would become the unstoppable, I have to keep saying this, unstoppable growth of the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said in John 12, 24, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. And right here today are many seeds. You have to know your seeds of the kingdom. And that seed in you is growing and developing. And that seed is not to be contained within you, but it's to influence the world. So, from small beginnings came phenomenal growth. And 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, the church was born at Pentecost with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit Amen, aren't you glad about the Holy Spirit? You know, in the first day, Peter stands up in Jerusalem and he speaks the word seed. He, casts, he broadcasts the seed of the gospel, the good news, and it results in 3,000 other seeds, 3,000 added to the kingdom of God. And it began in Jerusalem and it spread rapidly to the world. To this day, 2.3 billion people 
claim to be Christian. That is 31.11% of the world's population. That is the large tree that has grown from a small seed. And it's still growing. And will continue to grow. Leslie Weatherhead said this, Behold, (laughs) how vast a tree has grown from so small a seed. A despised rabbi in a despised corner of the Roman Empire, coming from despised Nazareth, sowed the seed himself and entrusted it to a dozen untrained, non-university men of lowly birth and little influence. And the worldwide church is the result. It is incredible. So a very clear message and understanding is seen in the parable of the small seed that became a large plant, the kingdom of God. But what about the birds? Now this is an interesting one. What about the birds that perch in the shade of the plant? Or as in the Gospel of Matthew, it says that the birds nest in the tree. Now, the disciples asked about the meaning of this parable, the mustard seed, but it doesn't actually tell us what Jesus said to them. So that means there are a few interpretations out there of what these birds represent. And rather than just go for one, I want to tell you um, what they are. So some say that the birds represent the Gentiles, the found shelter in the kingdom of God. But that doesn't add up because the Gentiles weren't just birds nesting in the tree. They actually became part of the tree. So I would dismiss that one, but that's just me. Some say the birds represent people who are attracted to the kingdom. That is the tree. They're attracted to the tree and uh, are saved or converted. And it's very true to say that the kingdom is attractive. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is about love and justice. The kingdom is about setting the oppressed free. It's good news for the poor. It's about caring for our planet and our environment. It's all about healing and deliverance, about transform lives and communities. Why wouldn't you want to see all that in your world? So we will find that people will be attracted to the kingdom and some will be genuinely and radically saved, but not everyone will be saved. There will be those who are attracted to the benefits of the kingdom or the values of the kingdom, but don't want to submit to the king. They just want to build their own nest or shelter in the tree. No one becomes part of the tree, which is the kingdom of God, without surrender to the king. No one. Now, there may be some among us like that, now or if not now in the future they like to be with us they receive such a lovely welcome it's a safe place it's a loving environment we are really nice people to be around (laughs) 
They like to enjoy the benefits of our generosity. They may even enjoy singing on a Sunday or even listening to an interesting message from the Bible. It's a nice atmosphere just being here. And all that's fine if that is where you are at. But we don't want you to stay there. At some point, you have to come to surrender your life to the king, to become part of the kingdom of God. And when you come to that place of surrender, you move from the nest that you built in the shelter of the tree and you become part of the tree. The tree that God is growing, the kingdom of God. Then you are reborn as a child of the king. You see, the tree does not grow by the number of birds perched in its branches. The tree grows when you become part of the tree. The birds are different to the tree. And I want to give you one more interpretation than what the birds. And this one's more sinister. If we go back again to the parable of the sower, we read, As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. And when asked, when Jesus was asked, what does that mean? He said, some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. So the birds in the parable there, previous to this one, may also represent Satan or the enemy. The demons who like to influence and take advantage of footholds given them in people's lives. Just like birds in a tree. You know what birds in a tree do? Basically, poo all over the branches of the tree. Have you seen that? If you ever park your car underneath a tree, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Well, that's what the enemy wants to do with the kingdom of God. They are out, the demons are out to tarnish and to ruin and to steal or to snatch away that which is good. They like to bring divisiveness and destruction. They have absolutely no intention of submitting their lives to the king. They are rebellious, self-serving, critical, negative, accusers of the brethren, gossipers, undermining, out to steal, kill and destroy. And although Christians cannot be possessed by demons, they can accommodate them. You must know that. They accommodate them by giving them footholds and influence in their thinking and actions. So here's the thing. Don't give room for the nest building of demons in your life. And you might think, gosh, this is a bit kind of, you know, we're in the 21st century. I tell you what, demons have not left planet Earth they are still here. You have to know that every demon that exposes themselves in the presence of Jesus are still around. They will take advantage if you give them advantage. You know, the only authority, let me put your mind at rest, the only authority that the devil has is what you give him in your life. This is how you give room for their nest building in your life. It's through your own sin that you don't deal with. It's through anger. It's through bitterness and unforgiveness. You have to deal with those things or they will be open doors in your life for the demonic to nest and infest your life and be damaging to the kingdom community. 
So they're the birds. But the central understanding of the mustard seed parable is it starts as a small seed, but it grows into a tree and nothing can stop its growth. And I like to say this, and I've said it numerous times, if part of your end time theology is the kingdom reducing in its influence and becoming weaker and weaker before the return of the king, that doesn't fit with the parable of the mustard seed and so many other scriptures. And that's not to say the persecution will not increase. It probably will. I believe it will. But the thing is, as we have witnessed all over the world, the stronger the opposition, the stronger are the people of God. The, the, the church explodes mightily in the presence of persecution. It really does. It's in a land like ours where we have nothing to even talk about persecution, really. But it's in this land we live that everything is so cozy and so nice, we can just lay back and think we're okay That is such a dangerous place to be. And when opposition comes, when persecution comes, you have to know where you are. You will become stronger as a child of God in the face of persecution. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Listen to this. Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and peace, that is kingdom, there will be no end. It didn't end a hundred years ago and now we're in a decline until Jesus comes back. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, no end. Psalm 145, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. Are you a dominionist, Carl? How can you be anything else? We're part of the greatest kingdom on the earth that will see the downfall of every earthly kingdom. If you want to call that dominionism, that's me. I believe that. So, I want to draw into um, (laughs) close. Three, Three things I want to just cover from the parable that I've shared today. Number one, are you sure you are part of the tree, the kingdom of God? And it's been said before, but let me say this again. If you said, yes, I remember 20 years ago, I said the sinner's prayer. I want you to know that means nothing unless your life right now is growing in God. Are you hearing God now? You may have heard him back then, but what about now? I want to tell you, he's not ever stopped speaking to you. But there may be a blockage in there right now. Or it might be that you're living in some sort of false security. Have you bowed the knee to the king? There's nothing wrong with observing and enjoying the shelter of the kingdom but it's better to be part of it and to see his kingdom grow in your life and in the lives of others. Just as the kingdom of God grows across this planet, so the kingdom has to grow in you and in me. It begins with the seed, the good news of the kingdom. It's planted in the soil of your heart as you choose to receive it. 
It begins with a surrender of your life, and it's a continual surrender of your life. As you discover that part of my life is still mine, I need to surrender that too. It's an ongoing thing. Surrender of your life to the king. Have you done that? Are you part of the kingdom? And if you haven't, you can do that today. You can do that today. If the beginning can start today. You can say, I'm ready for the seed. Plant that seed in me. Secondly, ask what is your contribution to the growth of the kingdom? Steph's word from last week. We are about our Father's business. So when Jesus returns, he's going to say, so what did you do with the good news of the kingdom of God? What did you do with it? Well, actually, I read about it, and it was really interesting. And um, yeah, I, 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 I look, no, what is the return? What have you invested into the kingdom? What have you produced of the good news of the kingdom in your life and in the lives of others? Do you pray regularly? Do you give generously? Do you love sacrificially? Or do you find that you just attend? Keep yourself a bit distant. I, well, I'm happy in my nest. I'm happy in my nest in the shadow of the tree where no one can really bother me, but I'm cozy. I want to hear at the end of my life, well done, good and faithful servant. But that will never happen unless we're doing something with the seed, something with the kingdom of God in our lives. And thirdly, you may be a follower of Christ here today, but you know in your branches you are accommodating the birds and their nests. And you know they're damaging you, controlling you, but today can be the day that you say no more. Because the good news of the kingdom is this. The prison that you are in, the door is open and you can come out of it. It's, it's as good as done if you just get up from where you are and say, I'm walking out of here because Jesus has opened the door for me. That's it. And you can do that today. God, I give you complete charge of me. Help me remove all that is destructive in my life and in those around me. I'm changing my focus from me to the king and his kingdom. It's not about me just enjoying a Sunday morning. It's the kingdom of God that has been invested in us for a reason. It's for the whole earth the whole world to be influenced by the crazy people like us. But then what about the early disciples? How crazy were they? Because it's not about us, it's about the seed in us that is growing and becomes a growing, growing influence. That's the mustard seed. That's the kingdom. That's the good news. Isn't that exciting? It, it is exciting. But please, anything that I've said today, you know, let's just, let's just stand. I just want to pray for us. We want to see the kingdom come in great power and in great authority. Jesus. Father, we, let's, just, let's just raise our hands to the king. Lord, we right now, uh, Lord, we look to you. 
You are the king of all kings. Lord, you're the king of the kingdom. You are the reason that we live. Lord, we thank you for the seed that is at work in the soil of our hearts. God, we thank you for the growth that is happening. And Lord, we thank you, Father, that as seeds are sown into this area, transformation has to come because, Lord, the seed of the kingdom is powerful. And so, God, we want to join with the forces of heaven in seeing the earth around us transformed. God, we believe, Lord, that your purpose that you originally gave to rule the earth, to bring the kingdom rule into our world, God has never changed. Lord, forgive us for sitting in our religion when, God, you want the kingdom to come and, and increase, increase, increase. Lord, we want to be agents, ambassadors, those who are servants of the kingdom of God. So, Lord, help us, even in the coming week, God, that as we go out, Lord, as we, as we mix uh, with people in our workplaces and everything else, Lord, May we hear your guiding voice. May we hear, Lord, your prompt, Lord, to, to maybe speak a word or to bring a kind deed or to do something that is of the kingdom of God. But God, we thank you for the great hope we have. The whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Amen. 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 We hope that you've been blessed by this message. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us at www.kingschurchwirral.co.uk.